My name is Stanley Culpepper, University of Georgia wheat scientist. I work on cotton, small grains, and about 35 different vegetable crops. Today we're going to give you an update on cotton weed management. Uh, welcome our friends from Florida up to Tifton, Georgia. The two biggest issues that are ongoing currently uh, with cotton weed management, number one, what's going to happen with dicamba. Uh, I'm not really going to address that today. I'm very optimistic we're going to get the new registration labels here in the very near future. Uh, but we'll, we'll wait till that happens and discuss that with you at a later date. The other issue, which is actually to me a bigger issue than necessarily the dicamba registration, is our weed resistance management. We're really, really struggling with the loss of herbicides to resistance, especially in our favorite weed, Palmer Amaranth. Uh, in our region, we have Palmer Amaranth that's, of course, resistant to Roundup. We all have that. Many of us have uh, Palmer Amaranth with resistance to our ALS chemistry, like Cadre or Staple. We have resistance to Atrazine in some areas. We have resistance to our DNA herbicides. There are yellow herbicides like Treflan or Prowl. Uh, now, just this week, at least in Georgia, we have confirmed resistance to our PPA, PPO herbicide class of chemistry. Those of you not familiar with the PPO herbicides, it's a whole group of herbicides. For example, Reflex, Goal, Cobra, Valor, uh, ET, AIM, etc. And to give you an example of what we're seeing in the greenhouse, last week we sprayed 240 ounces of Reflex, 240 ounces of Ultra Blazer, 125 ounces of Cobra over the top of three to four inch pigweed growing in the greenhouse and we're getting at most about 30% control. So there's another class of chemistry, at least in a few areas that we have lost. And with the loss of that class of chemistry, that is a huge number of herbicides that are no longer effective in controlling Palmer amaranth once, it, once it's emerged. So is the world ending? Absolutely not. Do we have to make very intelligent decisions and implement them very effectively now? Absolutely we do or we're going to end up in a very, very difficult uh, situation where we cannot control some of our problematic weeds and agronomic crops economically. So when you think about a cotton weed management program, the first thing you have to make sure of, there's absolutely no Palmer amaranth present at the time of planting. If you have other problematic weeds, say you got spider wart or some other troublesome weed, you make sure it's not present at planting. That is the first step. If you roll into a field to plant it, these weeds are up, you stop. It saves you money. It increases your yield and it increases your economic sustainability. The next thing we want to do in the herbicide program is we want to use residual herbicides. In the state of Georgia, I'm on my growers very aggressively. We want two active ingredients, both effective on Palmer amaranth, or if you have another troublesome weed, both effective on that troublesome weed. Put them at rates that will not hurt your crop. Uh, apply them effectively and if obviously if you have irrigation activate them very timely. So the two active ingredients are important for resistance management. They're also important uh, in regards to providing control for the first two to three weeks of that crop allowing for a timely post-emergence herbicide application. Alright so when the biggest pigweed or most problem, troublesome weed gets to about three inches we're going to come in with our first post-emergence application. All right, in my state right now, that would be a dicamba type program, a 2,4-D type program, or a liberty-based program, right? Whichever one's the most effective for you, whichever one makes you the most money, we can make any of those systems work. Now, depending on your weed spectrum, one or may be a little bit more effective than the other. Again, let's talk about Palmer Amaranth. The 2,4-D system and the dicamba system are a little bit more effective than the liberty system, but we can clearly control that pest with a liberty-based program. No pigweed emerged at planting, two residual herbicides behind the press wheel. Liberty, when the biggest pigweed in the field is three inches tall with that first post application, we have set up for success. After we make the first application, we need to, in most fields, not all fields, we need to come back with a sequential application. Now what you need to think about in getting better in your weed management program is the interval between your first post application and your second post application. All right, so if the biggest pigweed out there is three inches, we make our first post application, we kill everything, then we'll want to wait until the next flush comes, and the biggest pigweed again is about three inches, probably about three weeks, two and a half to three weeks. However, if we're a little late in the field, 
say that pigweed was six to eight inches tall when we came with that first post application, we're not going to kill it. And when you're not going to kill it, you need to tighten down the interval with the second post emergence application. We have tons of data that will help you understand how big the pigweed was with the post one application will directly influence when you need to be moving with your second post application. All right, now, unfortunately, after the second post application, many of our growers want to keep spraying over the top with maybe a third application. That is a horrible decision when you think about weed control, when you think about resistance management, and you think about economic sustainability. It's a great decision for that day because you saved a lot of time running a high boy versus getting the hoods out or getting the lay-by rig out. But again, it's a horrible decision with sustainability. If you look at the most problematic pests we're having now, you've got Palmer amaranth, you've got morning glories, you've got uh, spiderwort, and you have grasses. They're all showing up late in the year. They're showing up late in the year because the last over the top application, it does a great job covering the cotton, but it doesn't get under the cotton. It doesn't get to the ground. We're not taking advantage of the tools that we have, and it ends up having weeds that produce seed at the end of the year that over time you lose. So again, to summarize the sustainable program, no pigweed emerged at planting or no other problematic weed emerged at planting. Two residual herbicides behind the press wheel. Use the rates that will not hurt your cotton. Timely sequential post-emergence herbicide applications and then a lay-by. That's a good program on any field that we have. Now there's some fields and some girls that have been doing amazing the last five to ten years and they don't have a tremendous population. You may not need that aggressive program in those fields. But if you're not familiar with a field or you're struggling with a field, that is a good sound program uh, that, you, that you would want to go with. Now the last thing I'll, I'll mention, everybody says what's the next big problem going to be? Again, the, the ones I mentioned, Palmer Amaranth, we surveyed 1,737 growers last year. And we asked them to list. They actually had to list. It was not multiple choice. It was, it was completely, they took a pencil out and wrote down the most problematic pest. Not weedy pest, but the most problematic pest in agronomic crop production. Palmer Amaranth was number one, of course. In fact, it was listed seven and a half times more than any other pest. Our number two weed was Morning Glory, and it was the number two pest. All right, then we had white flies and we had some diseases, but we also had grasses. Just to mention about grasses, we are having a lot of issue in our dicamba system when we spray Roundup plus Extendamax, Roundup plus Ingenia, Roundup plus Fexapan, or with Tavium, we are seeing a reduction in grass control because of the antagonism of the interaction of that tank mixture. Uh, we're documenting that on research. Uh, the most effective approach to prevent this, number one, use residual herbicides behind the press wheel. What this does is it makes that grass smaller when you come with that post application. The smaller that grass is with the post application, the better control you're going to get with a Roundup plus dicamba tank mixture. And then you need to end the year up with a lay-by application where we can get good coverage of that grass uh, hiding up under the, under the crop. The last thing I want to mention, herbicide program no longer sustainable. We can't just use herbicides. There's absolutely no way we will remain sustainable. You have to be better than that. 99% of you are already better than that. You have to use tillage or you have to use cover crops. All right, we know Palmer Amaranth can't emerge deeper than the top two or three inches. So if we deep turn those seed, we put them more than two or three inches down, they can't come up. Okay, so we don't want to deep turn every year because then you just mix the seed around. But if you haven't deep turned the land in four or five years, those seed do not live as long as many other seeds. We can bury many of those seeds and kind of get a fresh start. All right, I'm a bigger fan of conservation tillage. Tillage works. Tillage is very effective. I love conservation tillage. And I'll briefly share with you the results of a study we've done the last two years. Uh, four locations, two states, Georgia and Tennessee, looking at the influence of cover crops on weed emergence. And of course, we're focusing on Palmer Amaranth again. And what we saw with an average cover crop, we intentionally went for an average cover crop. We didn't want anything with 10,000 pounds of uh, dry biomass because everybody would say I couldn't accomplish that. But if you have a good oak crop, a good wheat cover crop, or so-so rye crop, that's about where we were, four to 5,000 pounds of dry biomass. 
We reduced the number of Palmer amaranths we had to kill at the post one timing just from the cover crop. No herbicides, just from the cover crop. 75% at the time of post one. For the entire season, we reduced the number of pigweed we had to kill for 65% from a so-so cover crop. Now it's important to point out that works great on Palmer amaranth, doesn't work on morning glory. All right, so you gotta know your weed species, but our number one beast, cover crop can greatly reduce the number of pigweed we have to kill in season. The other one that I just wanna briefly mention, I've been adamant about, you've gotta use an at plant herbicide. In that same study where we mixed two effective residual herbicides, we had irrigation to activate those herbicides. Those pre-emergence herbicides reduced the number of Palmer amaranth we had to kill through the season by 98%. All right, so think about that. Those pre-emergence herbicides reduced the number of pigweed we had to kill from that point forward by 98%. So when I'm out spraying my dicamba, I'm out spraying my 2,4-D, I'm out spraying my Liberty, that's 98% less pigweed I have to kill. Now, what's most important about that statement is the fewer the pigweed I have to kill with my post-emergence herbicide, the longer the interval I have before I get resistance to that post-emergence herbicide. You should be aware there's resistance to 2,4-D uh, and dicamba in some areas in, in Kansas. Uh, they're looking at dicamba resistance in Tennessee and Arkansas. There's no doubt in my mind, we both have some scattered around. We just haven't confirmed it yet. So your goal is to reduce the number of pigweed we have to kill with our post-emergence herbicides. Cover crop, deep tillage ahead of planting, and the pre-emergence herbicide are your answer. The other important concept, again, is you need to clean up at the end of the year. And the best way to do that is to run that lay-by rig or hooded sprayer simply because you can get coverage. With that said, hope you guys have a great 2021 crop and hopefully we can see you in person soon.